Well, here we are. It's July 4th today, and uh, I'm gonna be putting today. I'm gonna be putting in uh, the brassicas wrapping around uh, the shed plot, one of our cornfields. Uh, it's probably gonna be only about a third of an acre of brassicas, and then later today I'm gonna be doing an, another brassica spot. And uh, both these areas are gonna be completely different methods. This is sprayed, and we're gonna disc it up. I know that works, but in the other area it's a little wet, so I'm just, it's already sprayed. So I'm just gonna broadcast and then maybe run the drag through a few times and then cult pack. It should work too, so that's my plan for today. This will probably be two separate videos because it's two different planting methods and two different food plots, so. Yeah, this is gonna be mainly winter greens. I might do half and half winter greens and honey hole. Throw some dank and radish and winter wheat in and call it good in both spots, so. Yeah, let's get disking. So I'm getting ready to plant here. I'm going to be putting in two different brassica blends. This is uh, Imperial Whitetail Wintergreens and Antler King's Honey Hole. These are like have kind of become my two favorite or top two uh, brassica blends. And I'm going to be mixing these two with uh, this. This is just a big, uh, I think this is Mossy Oak Biologic. It's, I think it has, it's got brassicas and wheat and some oats in there. I, uh, I put this in a cover, I put this as a cover crop in one of my clover food plots and those deer just consume this uh, winter wheat and oats and stuff all throughout the winter so I realized maybe I should uh, mix some of that with my brassica blends from now on so half this low section down here is going to be the winter greens with this and then the other side is going to be the honey hole with uh, this I'm not going to mix these two I'm just going to mix each one of these brassica blends with the wheat and I might actually throw in a few soybeans just to add some extra you know like as later planted beans it'll be like a really good uh, food source attraction when a lot of the other beans have already been you know turned yellow or picked already because it's already you know fourth of july today so these beans might not they should be able to produce a little bit but i'm not really expecting them to produce much the main food source here is going to be the the brassicas and the wheat so yeah let's get planting A lot of uh, wheat and oats seeds right there. This mix is like 90% wheat and oats and only 10% brassica, so I'm mixing it with the winter greens, which is pretty much all kale and brassica species. There we go, looks pretty darn good. All right, let's plant. go ready to plant now we're gonna go and plant that side over there I just planted this stuff so this is what the seed bed kind of looks like well over there it's a little better but this is kind of wetter ground here it didn't break up that nice but this is why I think the soybeans will do good because if any of them fall down in those crevices where the disc ran through, they should grow. And now, I just wanted to show you this before I pack it down with the cult pack. You can see right there's a brassica seed. So a lot of the brassica seeds are probably already down in these crevices because I don't see too many, you know? Which is a good thing. See right there's a couple. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna pack this all down with the cult packer just now, right now. Well, 
here we are back out at the shed plot where we got about three quarters of an acre of corn and then this bottom section is where I um, sprayed and disked it up a little bit also that far side over there so let's take a look at some of these I probably uh, maybe overseeded a little bit but uh, it should be all right it might be might be a little over but anyways I, I mixed in some uh, soybeans in here there's a lot of brassicas and there's also some uh, oats and winter rye. That's what all this grassy stuff is. But uh, yeah, it looks like it should do good. These later planted beans will stay uh, will stay green longer. And since since I got them in right around July 4th ish, yeah, it was July 4th actually. Um, they still should produce a little bit, but they're probably not going to produce you know as much as they should. But hey, after for the they're here for the deer. So look at there's a good amount of soybeans in here. I can't believe them. I can't believe how good the soybeans came in just from broadcasting. I didn't really, you know, cover them up that much. But anyways, these brassicas are looking good. So, uh, yeah, I'll update you again in another uh, week or two next time I'm out. So, you can see all these weeds right here. These are the brassicas and stuff, but all these smaller ones, all these weeds coming in. That's mainly because I disked it up here. If you go in the other food plot just over the way a little bit, that I had no-tilled, you know, sprayed and seeded the brassicas, there's like nothing for weeds, hardly anything. And I see these small weeds, whatever the heck they are, throughout most of the food plot here. So that's the advantage of the no-till brassicas or no-till any method, really. So, uh, yeah, it's firsthand. You can see it right there, all these little weeds coming in. Like I said, in the next video, or the next couple videos I got coming are all going to be a lot of no-till brassicas. After I spray and plant, there ain't too many weeds coming in at all. So that's just proof of what I'm showing you right here. All this grass kind of survived, but that's all right. That won't get too big. But yeah, so see in a week or so when this stuff gets a little bigger. The corn's looking great. Man, It's I can't believe how good this stuff looks, but what do you expect? It's corn. Anyways, um, see you in another week, guys. So just checking up on the food plots tonight. I was out here doing some stuff, so guess uh, see you in another week well here we are it's uh, been a while since I updated you on this plot but this is the final update in this video and I'll just show you what this stuff looks like it's coming along all right but there's a uh, there's quite a few weeds in here um, unfortunately but I guess that's what you get when you till the soil so here's a look at the brassicas now take a note um, there's all this brush and trees here so a lot of these brassicas um, that's why these ones look smaller than those ones out there. Those are getting quite a bit more sun. But anyways, I can show you the differences here. Like this right here is a purple top turnip. I can just tell by the leaves. And this this is the um, forage rape and uh, or maybe the, the kale. It's probably the rape. But anyways, probably a little too thick. Uh, this, I mixed in the soybeans in here too. But I think the deer, um, especially in this area, clipped off and ate up most of those ones. Oh, right here's a dank and radish. I had some of them in here too. They got these really weird looking leaves. But like I said, it's probably a little too thick and with all these weeds as competition here, these uh, brassicas probably won't do the best. You know, they're not gonna make that much for bulbs. Some corn damage there. I don't know if that's from the deer or from the raccoons. I know the deer like to silk the, the cobs, but holy crap, this stuff's almost at my I'll show you this. I'm about six foot, six foot one, and it's at like my mouth. So, I mean, this is the first year we've ever had any corn in this field, and my God, this stuff really took off in the last couple weeks. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's got to be close to 10 foot at the top of the tassels. But yeah, the brassicas are looking pretty darn good here. Um, I don't see too many soybeans, like I said earlier. The deer probably ate all of them. But some of these ones out here, it's a little thinner. Oh, there's not much of anything right there except weeds. But anyways, it's pretty thin right here. And that's a good thing because these brass, because you can tell how much bigger these are. These are actually going to produce bulbs. they got a lot more room to grow out here. Well, the, the forage rain bait is going to produce a bulb, but these radishes and turnips will. I think this is probably from the raccoons you can see right here. Good thing is it's only the outer row that's getting beat up a little bit. You walk in here a little bit, this stuff looks amazing. Other than the weeds in here, this field looks 
pretty dang amazing. This stuff's really starting to grow quick here. Look at this one. He's even got two, two cobs growing on that stalk. This one's got two on here too. Some of these uh, cobs are pretty darn good sized already. Let's see if I can get you a good look at one here without tripping myself. So they're just starting out. I'll probably do a corn update video probably sometime in August. This is kind of an update video as too. But let's get back to brass because then I'll finish up this video. It's probably getting kind of a long video already. Well, as you can tell, this side of the food plot does not look, or this side of the brassica planting does not look nearly as good as where I was just up there. First of all, the soil up there is better. This stuff down here is really dark, really swampy, wet. We had some heavy rains and it was actually standing water down in here. That's why this swamp grass is coming back in thick and I know the brass because they just cannot handle any any moisture at all. They really don't do good in these wet areas. As you can tell, they haven't done much of anything. But there is quite a few soybeans down here, as you can tell. Up there, the, the deer cleaned up almost all the soybeans. I couldn't see hardly any. Here they look really good. I guess up that way it looks a little better, but the other side of the food pot looks a lot better than what this side does. Next year, this will hopefully turn out a little better. But anyways, that's going to wrap up the video. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I know it was kind of a long video, but I like including all my results and all my food plot videos. I don't like making separate videos just to show the results. I just include it all in one video. Anyways, this year's going quick. It's going to be hunting season before we know it. It's literally only a month and a half away. It felt like two weeks ago we were putting in this corn, and now it's almost 10 feet tall. I can't believe it. But uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and uh, please like this video. And that's about all I got to say, so see you next time, guys.